Mr. Masakela, what is your role in the Graceman band? Um, I'm the comedian. You're the comedian? Yeah. But you play the trumpet as well, don't you? Yeah, no, I'm joking. Um, um, I don't know what's my role. I kind of, I kind of like helped to put the band together, you know, and I suggested that uh, uh, Paul talk to Miriam too because I thought that uh, it would round it out, would make sense also. Yeah. And especially because at the time we were getting a lot of flack, you know, uh, he, uh, he was getting a lot of flack from Graceland and uh, he just felt that uh, it was a very, very important show. Uh, and of course in the end, the, the media that were bothering us uh, sort of just fizzled away. Yeah. And I told them always that well, I'm sure they'll fizzle away as soon as the novelty of having a scoop with Graceland is over, you know, because they had a culture, some cultural boycott bullshit at the time. And, um, the, you know, like the people at the UN and the people at the liberation uh, 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 movements, they all changed their stand. But I think what helped Graceland, what, what, what Graceland was really great for is that it brought, like, the issue of the cultural um, boycott to the public all over the world. Because before then it was a private club at the UN and the, some few anti-apartheid organizations and it was all like done without consulting South Africans or without consulting, uh, 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 you know, the musicians. And it didn't make sense to me that anybody would love to block South African musicians from traveling or making it overseas because we're already like, a, a, very oppressed at home and our musicians are very talented but they never get a chance to come overseas so it didn't make sense you know but my real role in, in Graceland besides uh, performing and enjoying the music from home is that I'm a very very big fan of, Black, of, of Lady Smith Black Mambazo. I know Paul Simon from 1966 we had the same producer when we started it's a black guy called Tom Wilson it's the late Tom Wilson he produced the first Bob Dylan record, the first Simon and Garfunkel records, and my first records. So we know each other from then. And um, uh, the thing that attracted me most was Lady Smith Black Mambazo, because 16 years ago, Miriam McEver um, played me Black Mambazo's record. Uh, she was in, uh, in Guinea. And uh, um, I grew up around a town <clears throat> that had singers like Black Mambazo. So, of course, I collected all their records. And um, when he said he had worked with them, that was what attracted me most. I said, well, I will do anything just to be with, on tour with those guys. What makes them so special? Their way of singing or their technique? Not only their way of singing, but I think they, they, they represent, uh, I would say, the true, the, the true representative of the people of South Africa. You know? What's that? Um, you know, we're, we're basically like a, a, a traditional, people and urban life is new to us and uh, uh, um, groups like Black Mambazo entertain, I mean the, 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 the true recreation for the people who come to work as cheap labor, yeah. you know, because people can relate to them so like they kind of, they make urban life easier for us because they talk about uh, 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 they talk about what we really are about, you know. How can I compare? I can, I can only compare them to... It's like African-Americans. African-Americans, uh, um, uh, when they sing rhythm and blues, you know, or gospel music, it, you know, they, they bring out the soul of the African-American. You know what I'm saying? And if you listen, I have a record called The Music of Bulgaria, you know, and to me, that is the soul of, of, of Balkan life, yeah. you know. So, uh, 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 Black Mambazo sort of represents that. They represent the urban, rural soul of South Africa. You know, they, they, they sing about what we really are. You don't have to be an educated South African to understand them, you know. 
Uh, but what is fantastic about them is that universally, they just kill everybody, you know. There's something about them that's just very earthy, you know, that's for real, that's universal. Yeah. They represent the real feeling of people who are simple people, who are not rich, who are not greedy, who are exploited to a certain extent. You know, they sing about the common problems of people who are not wealthy and who are exploited by um, but industry. They deal with the big money now, don't they? They deal with the <coughs> money that's been raised by uh, the big Grayson tour. Well, you know, I always talk about that a lot. And, and people like, you know, said, uh, first of all, Paul Simon was rich when he went into South African music. He was already wealthy. Yeah. You know, he didn't need us to make his money. You know, that's A. But the thing that most people miss is that <clears throat> we're a very exploited nation, but we come from the richest country in the world. So that money should be our second name. People should be our first name and money should be our second name. But international industry, okay, international industry, Oppenheimer and people like that haven't done a tenth of, of in, you know, in, in feeling of uh, what Paul Simon has done. Yeah. In other words, Paul Simon is more interested in South Africans than Oppenheimer or Shell or Mobile or Anverb, where the diamonds go, understand? So, another thing, the fallacy is that when you're oppressed, doesn't mean you have to be poor, especially when you come from a rich country. We should actually be, we should be the rich people of South Africa, not Oppenheimer and Shell and Mobile Oil. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, I'm never ashamed of, uh, of Africans making money because for 300 years, we've made money for Europe. It's about time we make money for ourselves. And I'm not ashamed when any revolutionary, from, from, especially from South Africa, has money. I think that we're too poor. Because if we were rich, we wouldn't have to, uh, uh, we wouldn't have to come overseas. Even. You've you know? traveled over the past 20 years around the world. You even had a hit single in the late 60s. <laughs> and, uh, you saw almost every part of the world. Um, is the Graceland setup as it is right now, with Ladies with Black Mombasa, with Mary McKeel, with Yui Masakela, and the Graceland Band, and Paul Simon, the best combination there has ever been? No, I mean like, um, we have unbelievable musicians in South Africa. I mean like, they're very great. Really, really, very great. And uh, this is just a drop in the ocean. We have Sarafina, you know, that I, I, I worked on with Mbonge Ngema. I just came from Vienna, where we opened to like 20 minutes standing ovation at the end. We've had uh, uh, Sarafina in um, uh, New York now for two years. We're going to make a long uh, uh, movie. But before that, there was King Kong um, um, 30 years ago which was a smash in Europe. Uh, Miriam Mugeba was the leading, uh, lead singer uh, and, and, uh, uh, <coughs> and the lead, uh, leading star when it was in South Africa. We've had Asna Mali, we've had like theatre from Arthur Fugard, we've had Merupa, we've had Abdullah Ibrahim. But this is all just a drop in the ocean. I think Graceland is just, it's just one little window. One little window in um, the Empire State Building of South Africa. Is Graceland uh, an African project or is it an American project? So or you, is it a combination of both? I think it's a universal and a human project. I think um, what it is, is like, a, it's, it's, it's a great coincidence that a very successful American uh, can pick up an album. You have a fly on your head. I'm sure it didn't I come. I don't think it came with us, though. <laughs> um, I think it's amazing, you know, that people have ignored our situation for a long time and have only like, they've only uh, um, seen it from a political point of view. So it was great that somebody could be moved by our music so much that in spite of all opposition, he went and sought out South Africans and said, I want to be with you and sing with you, just as a human being, you know. 
because your music moves me. Yeah. It's a beautiful feeling. So and it's a, it's, I think it's a unique, it's definitely a unique happening, you know. Um, it's the same kind of thing that brought me to the States. You know, I had Louis Armstrong, I had Charlie Parker, and I said, I got to go there. You know, so I can identify with Paul Simon going to uh, South Africa, the music pulling him. Yeah. I've got two questions left. Right. And in my opinion, they're very important. You told already about uh, the misunderstanding about uh, the boycott against Paul Simon yeah. and all kinds of other boycotts. But um, what has been the, the biggest achievement of Paul Simon while making this album and while touring with the band? I think uh, is the biggest achievement is that he brought to the world, um, uh, it brought to the world a view of South African township life that nobody would normally have brought it. You know, it would have taken us maybe another 10 years for people to see it at this level. Because, I mean, Miriam, Keva and myself, we've been overseas for a long time, you know. <coughs> but how can I put it? If, if Eric Clapton hadn't recorded I Shot the Sheriff, reggae and, and the Caribbean wouldn't have been known about. If Stan Gaines hadn't done uh, Desifinado or whatever, what with uh, uh, the Joao Gilberto and them, we would never have heard of uh, Brazil for such a long time, you know. If Belafonte didn't sing, day -o, day -o, day -o, day -o, day -o, we'd never have known about the Caribbean and its beautiful music, you know. And I, so I can go on forever, you know. Uh, <clears throat> um, so, I mean, I think that's the greatest achievement, is that like it was able to bring it, to bring South African music out at a very high level, uh, uh, because at all like Graceland, uh, even though I had a hit, you know, I, had, I had one hit, it was a fluke. And um, the marketplace, by the way, that, that the music marketplace is all South African allied territory. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing that we, we made it overseas in spite of the fact that America and Europe, when we came, hated us because we were against the South African government. Yeah. We didn't recognize them and this was their friends. And of course, we were a threat to them. You know what I'm saying? So um, uh, um, when Paul Simon had a hit with his record, I was very happy because it, it, it made it possible for him to afford to bring us all over to show a picture of the township at a very high level. And the people loved it, you know. I mean, uh, uh, 10 million people bought the record and we played to millions of people. That how could did, never have happened. How did uh, South African people, blacks and whites, react on the album? Oh, they love it. I think every, I think every home has the video that we did in Zimbabwe. Yeah, every home in, in South Africa. Yeah, every right. home in South Africa has that video, you know. And they played day and night. Especially Boer homes. They all have it, you know. Because see, what you have to understand in South Africa is that uh, really, except for the system, except for the government, everybody just would really like to have a peaceful time, you know. So it's a few greedy guys who are power hungry. And uh, that's what we want to do away with. I don't think we think of uh, black and white, you know, because that's the biggest bore. And I think the world is scared of like seeing that go because then places like America won't have any excuses for oppress. They'll be too visible for oppressing black people. Because I think when we are free in South Africa, our main thing is going to be to go everywhere in the world where there is oppression and fight it. What is your favorite number of the album? Of which album? Of Graceland. Diamonds. On the soles of shoes. Hey. I mean, you know. Yeah. If, if every South African who is in the township and is oppressed had diamonds on the soles of their shoes, we wouldn't even have to be here. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, where do I send the bill? Yeah. <laughs>